In this lecture, let's now take a minute to understand the asynchronous nature of Node.js and why it is important. So, in this lecture, I will cover some fundamental concepts like synchronous, asynchronous, blocking and non-blocking code. And all of this is going to be very important in order to understand everything that is coming up in this course. Let's first understand what a synchronous code is. Here, I have the same piece of code which we wrote in our last lecture in order to read a file. So here, I'm using this read file sync method in order to read this input.txt file. And this code which you see here, this is a synchronous code. Synchronous code simply means that each statement in that program will be executed line by line in the order in which they have been written. And if any task is going to take long time in its execution, then the next line of code will have to wait for its execution. So for example, when we run this program, first of all, this line of code will be executed and it will be executed in the single thread which JavaScript provides. So we know that JavaScript is a single threaded programming language and all the code which we write in JavaScript that gets executed in that single thread. So here also this line of code will be executed first and it will be executed in that single thread. And once the execution of this line is complete, then only the next line of code will be executed. So in the next line of code, we are calling this read file sync function. Now let's say this read file sync function is reading this input.txt file and this input.txt file is very large. So this read file sync method is going to take some time in reading that file. And for that time, this thread will be blocked because this thread is now executing this read file sync method. And this thread will be unblocked only after the execution of read file sync method is complete. Till that time, this thread is blocked. And that's why we say that synchronous codes are blocking code. Because the next line of code here, this console.log statement, it will be executed only after the execution of this read file sync method is complete. So here, the execution of next line of code is blocked. Now, once the execution of this read file sync method is complete, the thread will be unblocked. And then the next line of code, which is this console.log statement, this will be executed and it will output the content of that input.txt file in the output window in the terminal. So as you saw in a synchronous code, the code is executed line by line one after the other. And if a line of code takes more time in its execution, then the execution of the next line of code is blocked. And that's why we say synchronous code is blocking code. Now, what is the solution of this problem? Well, this read file sync, this is an API which is provided by node and this API runs synchronously. And in the last lecture, I also mentioned that we also have a method, an API, which we can use to read a file, but that method runs asynchronously. So if I go to the next slide, here you will notice that we have almost the same type of code here. But this time, instead of using read file sync, we are using read file method. And this read file method runs asynchronously. Now, what does that mean? Let's understand that. So again, when we run this program, first of all, this line of code will be executed and this will be executed in the main thread, the thread which is provided by JavaScript. Once the execution of this line is complete, the next line of code will be executed. But this code will be executed in the background. It will not be executed in the main thread. Instead, it will run in the background. And since this code is not going to run in the main thread, since it is running in the background, this main thread is not blocked. That means this main thread is empty and the next line of code can be executed in that main thread. And here we are executing this console.log statement. So once the execution of this console.log statement is complete, it will log this message in the output window. And this function, this read file function is still executing in the background, but it did not block the execution of next line of code. So this read file method here is running asynchronously. It is running in the background without blocking the main thread. And this is what asynchronous programming is. In Node.js, Node.js environment provides some APIs which can run asynchronously in the background. It does not get executed in the main thread. It gets executed in the background and it does not block the main thread. So the next line of code can be executed without getting blocked. Now, if you notice with this read file function, we are specifying the file which we want to read in this case input.txt. And to this read file function, we have also specified a callback function. So here we are using this arrow function syntax. Now this callback function gets executed once the job of this read file function is complete. Okay, so the job of this read file method is to read the content of the file which we have specified as the first argument. 
and once that job is complete that means once the read file method has read all the content of that file the job of that read file method is complete and once its job is complete the callback function which we have passed to this read file function that will be passed to the main thread and that callback function will be executed in the main thread so keep in mind that this read file function will be executed in the background and once the job of this read file function is complete the callback function which we have attached to this read file that will be passed over to the main thread the single thread provided by javascript and this callback function will execute in that main single thread so once the execution of this callback function is complete it will log the content of the file in this output window so this is how an asynchronous code works and if you notice the output here the string which we have passed to the second console.log statement that has been executed first and it has been logged in the output window first and after that only the value stored in this data variable has been logged so since this line of code was executed asynchronously it did not block the execution of next line of code that means in this case this console.log statement and that's why we say that asynchronous code is non-blocking code because it does not block the execution of rest of the code and in node.js just like read file there are other apis also which node.js provides and which runs asynchronously in the background and keep in mind that every api every method which node.js provides and which runs asynchronously to that api or to that method we need to pass a callback function and that callback function gets executed when the job of that api or that method is complete and that callback function gets executed in the main thread so now the question here is why this has to be actually in this way what's the problem with blocking code or synchronous code execution in node.js or in other words why do we actually use callback so many times in node.js let's understand that so as you already know in node.js we use javascript and javascript gets executed in a single thread in other programming languages like php we can create multiple threads but in javascript we have only one single thread and that thread is responsible for executing all the javascript code in a very simple terms a thread is responsible for executing the program code in the machine's processor when we are creating a node.js application this single thread provided by javascript it is responsible for executing that node.js program code in the machine's processor in the machine's cpu okay so the main point which you need to remember here is that node.js is single threaded so for each application which we create using node.js there is only one thread so what this means is that all the users accessing your application they are all using the same single thread let's say you are creating a web application with the backend using node.js now let's say there are thousand users which are trying to access that web application and since node.js runs in a single thread all those thousand users are trying to access your application using the same single thread so whenever the users are trying to interact with your web application the code that is run for each user will be executed all in the same thread at the same place in the same computer which is running the application and that is true no matter if you have five users or you have 5000 or 5 million users now what this also means is that when one user locks the single thread with synchronous code like we saw before then all the users will have to wait for that execution to finish and that might not be a huge problem if you have like five users but it's definitely a problem for thousands or even millions of users at the same time so imagine there's a user accessing your application and there is a huge synchronous file read in your code that will take like 10 seconds to load this will mean that for that 10 second all the users will have to wait because the entire execution is blocked for that 10 seconds so if those users want to do some simple tasks like log into your application or just requesting some data they won't be able to do so all those users will have to wait until the file is finished reading only when that happens they will finally be able to perform these simple tasks one after the other now please note that this is a very oversimplified version of what really happens behind the scenes of node.js anyway this is how the situation would play out with synchronous blocking code which is obviously a terrible experience for your users and so it's really your job as a developer to avoid all these kinds of situation by using asynchronous code so for the same situation we should of course use the asynchronous file read function which instead of blocking the single thread does the heavy work in the background where it basically stays until it's finished reading the data from the file and we also register a callback function with this file read function which gets called once the data is available
and in this scenario all other users can perform their task in single thread one after the other while the file is still being read in the background now once the data is read our callback function will of course get called to be executed in the main single thread in order to process the read data and that's it that's a very high level overview of how node.js handles asynchronous behavior in order to implement the non blocking io model that we talked about in the intro lecture and io simply stands for input output which is basically stuff like accessing the file system and handling network requests etc and this is the whole reason why node.js is completely designed around callbacks as you will see throughout the course in other programming languages like php it works very differently because you get basically one new thread for each new user which is a completely different paradigm and it really works in a completely different way but the creators of node.js found this model this non blocking io model to be the best solution for building high performant and scalable web applications now there is one more thing which i want to make clear here it's important to understand that when we use callback in our code that doesn't automatically make it asynchronous okay so passing function around into another function it's quite common in javascript but of course that does not make them asynchronous automatically it only works this way for some functions in the node.js api such as this read file function that we talked about and there are other functions as well there are other apis as well which also runs asynchronously and which takes a callback function which gets executed when the job of that api that asynchronous api is complete but just because a function is taking a callback function as its argument does not make that function asynchronous keep that point in mind and now just to finish since we are talking about asynchronous code here just one last note about callback functions so this callback model that we just discussed it can quickly lead to some hard to read and unmanageable code just take this example where the second file read depends on the first one then the third file read depends on the second one and finally we want to use the final data to write a file as a result now that looks quite confusing right i mean it's going to work just fine but it's kind of a bit confusing and this is just four level of depth imagine you had like 10 or 20 levels in that case that code will become unmanageable and unreadable and this kind of code here where we call a callback function inside another callback function inside another callback function this is called as callback hell it's such a common problem that it already got its own name and you can identify a callback hell in a program when you see this triangular shape here so this triangular shape in a javascript code it mostly specifies the callback hell now the question is how do we actually escape callback hells well we can use more advanced tools for handling asynchronous code like es6 promises or even better es8 async await and using these javascript features we can avoid callback hell in our program so in this lecture we learned what is synchronous and asynchronous code and what is the difference between them and why asynchronous code is so important in case of node js and we also briefly talked about callback hell which we can come across while working with asynchronous code and what are the different ways of dealing with callback hell this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day